A state lawmaker from the East Bay is drawing a lot of attention this afternoon after bringing her newborn baby with her to the assembly floor after being told that maternity leave did not qualify her to participate remotely. I was actually in the middle of feeding my daughter when this bill came up and I ran down on the floor today because I strongly believe we need to pass this bill. Assemblywoman Buffy Wicks traveled to Sacramento from Oakland with her one-month-old daughter Ellie yesterday on the final day of the legislative session. She had asked to have one of her colleagues vote on her behalf, especially because of concerns over the coronavirus, but she was told that her recent labor did not qualify her as high risk for the virus. Joining us now to talk about all of this live is Assemblywoman Buffy Wicks. Uh, Assemblywoman Wicks, really good to have you on. We appreciate your time. Um, obviously, you're being praised for, for, for what you did in showing up at the assembly, but I, I know you feel like you, you shouldn't have had to do that. Uh, talk to me about the emotions that were, that were going through you in, in that moment on the assembly floor. Sure. You know, as a representative of the East Bay, I feel an obligation to um, vote my district's needs. And obviously there's a lot of issues facing the state right now. Um, but I also just had a child a couple weeks ago. And so the, the issues of sort of balancing those two things was very real for me. Um, I was hoping to proxy vote. That was a system we had put in place um, in the assembly, but um, was told maternity to leave does not qualify me for the proxy vote. And so I was faced with the decision, do I stay home or do I go and um, represent my district? And there were a lot of tough votes. Um, Coming through, uh, sorry, my three-year-old's right here. <laughs> um, no, uh, a lot of tough votes it. coming through, uh, <laughs> and I just felt the need to be there, um, including the paid, uh, the expanded family leave policy um, that I was the 41st vote on, um, and wanted to make sure I was there for that. And I got to hold my newborn Mommy. child in my hand while I um, took that vote. Mommy. Daddy took away. Obviously, yep. the, the experience that you had um, and that many of us are going through you know, demonstrates the challenges of being a working mother, a working parent. Um, what, what do you hope is the takeaway? What do you hope changes as a result of, of your experience? Well, my hope is that this is about a broader conversation about the stresses that many families are being faced with right now. You know, and I happen to be on the floor of the legislature with my newborn um, trying to, you know, uh, do my job, but there are, you know, low income families, service workers who are um, faced with really tough challenges, um, families across the East Bay, across the state. Um, we have families who are, you know, they're either faced with, you know, leaving their kids to do Zoom by themselves while they go to their job or they're trying to work um, to members of the household and their family while their kids are doing distance learning. You know, we are all faced with incredible challenges right now given COVID-19. And I think what this has also showed us is that, you know, our social safety net system is not prepared for this. We don't value working families. We don't value working parents, especially new parents. We need better paid leave policies. We need affordable child care. We need, you know, better paid sick days and a whole um, uh, safety net for folks, for families who are who are trying to work and do the best thing for their family and still honor those family relationships. So my hope is that it brings about a broader conversation about what we're doing for our working families. All right, I, I wanna show you that uh, there was a tweet and maybe, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't from former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton who uh, heard about what you did on the assembly floor and, and she tweeted this, California assembly member Buffy Wicks was told that having recently given birth wasn't a sufficient excuse to cast a vote remotely. So she brought her newborn daughter to the floor to weigh in on an important housing bill. And then she uh, put the, the strong emoji there at, at the end of it. Uh, I, let me get your thoughts on what it's like to, to have someone like Secretary Clinton uh, weigh in on your experience and, and what does that mean to you? Well, you know, there's she's broken a lot of glass ceilings. There's not a lot of women who've done as much as she has. Um, and I think she, more than many others, realized the, the challenges that women are faced with, especially in the political world, um, especially navigating um, parenthood, navigating, uh, you know, how you balance work and family and career and all of these things. And so um, it's an honor to have her, you know, tweet about this experience. But again, I don't think this is about me. It's about a broader issue our communities are being faced with right now. And the fact that we have to do better by our working families, we have to do better by our working moms and dads especially those with young kids you know I've been breastfeeding my daughter for the last four weeks and I'm awake every two hours to do that and that's a real that's a real life you know um, and so have those experiences as many other you know women are going through right now um, and hope that we can call upon broader policy reform in this place now 
as we wrap up here, because we are running out of time, but I, I do want to contrast what you experienced with, with that, the experience of, of Senate Republicans uh, at the state legislature who all voted remotely after one lawmaker, uh, Senator Brian Jones, tested positive for COVID-19. Do, do you believe that there was a, a double standard at work in terms of who could vote remotely? Well, I know the Senate was conducting its own process in terms of how to deal with COVID-19 and continuity of government. The Assembly was conducting its own process. They turned out to have different processes in place. Um, and, you know, it is my hope that coming out of this, we can, um, you know, come together as, as an institution, a broad institution that represents, you know, Californians and our needs and put together better reforms around um, proxy voting and um, remote participation so that all of our members are safe. We have members who, you know, are pregnant now. Um, myself, who's just had a baby. We have members who care for sick loved ones who are, are high risk, members who care for their elderly parents. Um, so we have to figure out a way that, that those members can still do the people's work and be there for their constituents um, while not um, uh, exposing themselves to unnecessary risk. Um, so that is the goal. Um, and I think moving forward, what I want to work with the speaker on um, is to ensure that we have the ability to do that. Okay. Well, it was certainly quite a moment. We, we appreciate you taking the time. We'll let you get back to the crew there uh, at home. Yeah, got to go back to the three-year-old. <laughs> I, I, I get it completely. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you. We appreciate it. Take care.